see any faces. Uh, good evening and thank you for coming out to the event. What we just played is called Balladair, composed by Frank Erickson. A little fact about Frank Erickson is that when he was around the age of the students before you, he wrote his first composition for band. Before we move on to our next piece, I would like to ask that you all keep Mr. Drum in your thoughts. He was originally going to be conducting our next piece into the Arctic, but cannot due to another surgery on his eye. Please keep him in your thoughts and prayers for soon recovery.
Uh, back in May, students had the opportunity to work with two local clinicians, Mike Robinson, the director of bands at Mars Hill, and Mary Jo Spira, the retired band director at North Buncle Middle School. They worked in a collaboration with Mount Heritage on Into the Arctic and our next piece, Encanto. <clears throat>
my kids have been keeping count of how many times I dropped my baton during the week. That was not to make it, but that was my first for the week. Uh, Pictures Pad and Exhibition was written by Modes Mosikorski, and I need some explanation to the audience before we start playing the piece. Am I pronouncing that name right? Modes Mosikorski. Uh, the piece is broken up into six parts, the first in Promenade. Uh, this introduction piece is rated as one of Mr. Gorski's most charming inspirations. The composer portrays himself walking idly about the exhibition, now right, now left, at one moment pausing before a picture, at another sadly reminiscent. The old castle, let's see, oh, this one. The ox cart is particularly successful in graphic description by means of music. The cart creaks and groans as it moves slowly through the rough road in the twilight. The sound of the oxen's hoofs are produced by the steady beat of the timpani in the bass drum, uh, above which is heard the song of the driver, who rejoices that the day's toil has ended. The ponderous bass voices grow soft as the car disappears in the thickening gloom. Uh, next, the ballet of the unhatched chickens, or as we like to call it, the egg dance, um, <laughs> is delicately humorous representation of chicks emerging from their shells. The light tapping on the shells and the soft chirping and stirring are reproduced with great fidelity. The hut of Baba Yaga, or as they like to call it, the hut of Lady Gaga, is written from a folk legend, the witch Bab Yaga. Bab Yaga's hut was mounted on chicks' claws, and rode through the air in Mormar, propelled by a pestle, devastating fields and woods as she rode. The Great Gate of Kiev was inspired by the artist's design for the gate. It was designed in an archaic Russian style, featuring a cupola in the form of an ancient Slavonic helmet. The music depicts the Bogatiri, also known as the war heroes, entering the city in solemn procession. A religious chant is followed by a loud descending scales accompanying the um, martial theme. Finally, the opening chords of the march are heard for just now as if sung by a great multitude assembled in the capital city. Uh, this is a very interesting piece, so good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck to you. It's, it's interesting pieces to do. <laughs>
this time, uh, if you don't mind to lower the screen, um, and Kayla, can you fix the computer? Thank you. Um, I would like to take this time to recognize our seniors. Uh, the band has a few gifts to give them, so seniors, please come up here on the stage. I bought you a gift. Please receive it. Thank you. Mary Beth, here tonight. Oh, okay. Yes. Awesome. Just give us a second to figure out the computer. Oh, it's figured out. Okay. Can we turn the lights off so we can see? Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I would like to take this. Uh, oh, we can now play Pop and Circumstance, commemorating their graduation event. Seniors, I want you to promise me to not give up music. It's something you can take with you for the rest of your days. around my class for all that.
Thank you. All right, our final piece for the night is Into the Storm. It was inspired by the storm of the century, the great blizzard of 1993. I do not remember this blizzard too well because I was only about two at the time, uh, but I am sure most of you remember this very clearly. The composer, Robert W. Smith, spent most of his life in the South United States, far away from the vicious winter storms of the northeastern part of the country. Spending four days completely snowbound, prompted many hours of watching and listening to the spectacle of nature outside the comfort of a warm house in a roaring fire. Oh, fire. Please listen to see if you can hear the shaking of the snow globe, the period of intense calm and beauty, and the fury of the return of the storm. Before we play our final piece, uh, I would like to say a few words of gratitude. As many of you know, I will not be returning in the fall. I will be going to the University of Tennessee to get my master's degree. I am very confident, though, that the band program will be very capable in the hands of Mr. Sam on the bottom. If you would like to stand up so people know who he is. I know from experience, two of players aren't the brightest, but I'm sure he will do just fine. <laughs> I can say that because I'm married to one. All right, uh, let's see. It has been an honor and a pleasure to have been their band director. The band has and will continue to be close to my heart. They have a promising future ahead with Mr. Sale, and I look forward to supporting the band from the audience. Here is our last piece into the story.
think they deserve another round of applause. Before we end the night, uh, Aiden Hutchings, you come up here to give me the bids and stuff. The out there? By the way, this guy can play a killer saxophone. <laughs> oh no, I teach him. I'll have the new director to pick out a number. Anyway, have a good night. They deserve a steak dinner.